All right, everybody back again. It is your boy BQ. Welcome back to the channel. We're going to get into these Bound for Glory predictions. I do do things a little bit different. I do include the betting odds for those of you who like that kind of thing. Um, the only place you can bet on TNA is bet online. So if you go to bet online, if you're in the United States and if you're in a state that allows betting, uh, bet online is the place to be. I cannot bet in Las Vegas on this site, unfortunately. Uh, I wish that I could. I would I would love to. But it is unfortunately not something that I can do. So I'm going to get into the betting odds and then give you what my personal parlay would be if I were to play tonight. <clears throat> so uh, we're going to do this real, real quick. We're going to run it down. We got bound for glory tonight. The first match, and there's no betting odds on this, is the call your shot gauntlet. I think Frankie Kazarian is going to win this thing from the number one spot. We've had two number one winners. They were the first two years in a row. Every year, this match gets pushed and promoted less and less. The The obvious choice is Frankie Kazarian to win because there's only ever one storyline going into a bound, call your shot gauntlet. One. The only curveball they ever threw at us was Bully Ray coming in as a surprise entrant and winning. <clears throat> Other than that, we know who's going to win ahead of time. So I feel pretty good that Frankie Kazarian is going to win this thing, even though he's coming in at number one. Or they're going to eliminate him immediately like they did with Joe Hendry at NXT. I I don't know. But I think he's going to win this thing. Now, there's three categories for surprise entrance every year. There's a comedy person and or jobber, number one. Number two, and, and you know I'm talking about swoggles, demon. Number two, there's someone who... They're putting in there strictly to pop the audience. And then number three, someone who's going to be on the show for an extended period of time. Um, I think Ace Steel is going to be in this thing. <laughs> uh, that's just a prediction I have. I don't know if I put him in that jobber or pop the crowd category, but I do think he's going to be in it. And then um, someone going on the show, going uh, someone on the show going forward. Uh, I don't know about that one. If it is a big name, which I don't think it is. There's a possibility a bigger name would eliminate Frankie Kazarian and then also get involved in the main event because the main event is going to be a shit show. I, I'm positive of it. Um, I saw one website thinking it's going to be Donovan Dijak. I, I really hope it's not. I have like zero interest in that dude. Zero uh, negative interest in that charisma less ass dude. I, I do not want him on the show. Uh, I, I would say. Trevor Lee is a possibility too. I think he's really, really grossly overrated. Um, I've never seen remotely what people see in him. But if you're talking about a bigger name, one of those two would make sense. Um, if Scott Demore were booking this, we would get man. What the hell is his name? Um, the Indian dude. Now, the Jinder Mahal guy, I'm trying to think what his real name is. If Scott were booking, he he would be in. Probably win it. But I'm going to go with Frankie Kazarian winning this thing. I know it sounds really predictable, but I think it's going to be him. I think we're going to get the return of Kylan King, and I think we're going to get the return of Savannah Evans as well, who I let you guys know is being repackaged. So... I think we're going to see both of them. If not, we're going to see one of them. Also on the pre-show, we got Ash and Heather by Elegance, the future knockout tag team champions, and they're taking on Brinley Reese from NXT and Zaya Brookside. I think Ash and Heather are going to win this thing. It only makes sense. They're very likely going to go immediately into a feud for the knockouts tag team championships and win them. So I think that's an easy win. There's no betting odds on the pre-show. Now, we're going to get into the main card here and the betting odds, and I think there's some money to be made this year. A year ago, not a year ago, I'm sorry, last pay-per-view, Slammiversary, Vegas only gave betting odds, I think, on four or five matches, and they were correct on all of them, even when I didn't think there were going to be. like I thought, I actually thought AJ Francis was going, to, was going to be PCO, which was very silly of me. But Vegas, for what it's worth, was correct on every single uh, favorite last year monsters ball matt cardona versus pco they have matt cardona favored to win this at, at minus 350 
and PCO the underdog at 225. That means if you bet 100, or, or, excuse me, if you bet 350 on Matt Cardona to win, you'll win 100. If you bet 100 on PCO, you'll win 225. So if you think PCO, they're going to do the PCO feel good moment that they always seem to do because uh, no one beats him ever, then there's some money in PCO. But I would have said, I would have guaranteed Matt Cardona win this thing if this guy wasn't openly com- campaigning on a regular basis to go to WWE or AEW. You know, like it's it's so, I mean, he uses TNA. I, d- I don't, there's no way around it. <laughs> he, and they're they're happy to book him. Um, but it would make sense for him to win these belts. But if you want to say, hey, PCO, I'm going to ch- go with P- Matt Cardona winning but by a pussy hair because I, I really wouldn't be surprised if PCO doesn't win. But if you, if you're like, uh, I think I'm, I'm going to take a risk, you know, this is a good place to do it. Betting on PCO. Steve Macklin versus Josh Alexander. Steve Macklin is favored to win this at minus 375. Josh Alexander is the underdog at plus 240. Meaning if you bet 375, you'll win a hundred on Steve Macklin. If you bet 100 on Josh Alexander, you'll win 240. This is a tough one because I, I do think the safe money is Steve Macklin winning this thing, but I think you can really drag out the feud if Josh Alexander wins. It's going to be really telling here because if Josh is right after forming the Northern Armory and he's been taking L's the last couple months on a really regular basis, then he's on his way out of here, which would suck for the Northern Armory for for the Sinner and Saint because they got something going that I think has some legs. This is a feud that you can revisit anytime you want and people are going to have interest in it. So even though Steve Macklin is the Vegas favorite, I wouldn't be, there might be a little bit of money betting on Josh Alexander. TNA knockouts world championship. This is where you can win some money, folks. George, Jordan Grace is favored at minus 300. Masha Slamovich, the underdog at plus 200. Meaning you have to bet 300 on Jordan to win 100, bet 100 on Masha Slamovich to win 200. So you would double your money. I'm pretty fucking sure Masha Slamovich is winning this match. There's no way. If, if Jordan is on her way out, there's no way Masha loses to her again. None. It, it, impossible. Now, if Jordan wins, that would mean she's probably sticking around, which I don't see that being a thing. I guess anything is possible. It just wouldn't make, I, I just don't see that being a thing. So, if it were me, if I were a betting man, which I am, I would put my money on Masha Slamovich here. Knockouts Tag Team Championship. I'm going with Masha, by the way. I'm I'm officially, I guess I didn't make a prediction for Macklin versus Josh Alexander. I am, that is such a tough one. I'm going with Josh Alexander. I, I, I'm, I'm going with him. Um. Yeah, I got Masha as the winning, beating Jordan Grace. Knockouts Tag Team World Championship. Jody Threat and Danny Luna, Spitfire versus Rosemary and Wendy Chu. Vegas has Jody Threat and Spitfire. I'm sorry, yeah, Jody Threat and Danny Luna at minus 350 as the favorites. Rosemary and Wendy Chu at plus 25, 225 as the underdogs. Now, if you would have asked me yesterday, I would have said, hey, I think Rosemary and Wendy Chu are winning this thing. Telegraph and Tom has been letting us know for a while that someone from NXT is going to win a TNA championship. This is the title that makes the most sense to do that with. But um, the way TNA books their knockouts tag team divisions is that there's only two teams at a time. And both those teams will win the both those teams will be well, obviously one team is the champion. The challenger will, will win the belts. Like if you put a team together, you will win the titles. It is a guarantee. It's safe to say that Ash by Elegance and Heather are going to enter the knockouts tag team title picture here very soon. It makes more sense to do that versus Spitfire. Um, They're very beatable champions. And Rosemary and Wendy Chu, it only Wendy Chu is able to do a lot of TNA dates or if Rosemary is able to do a lot of NXT dates. Like there's there's a logistic issue there when you're talking about putting the 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 titles on a team that one half is on one show and one is on the other, you know? So um, I'm actually going to go with Spitfire winning this thing. 
singles match, Moose versus Mike Santana. I think there's a little bit of money to be made here as well. Moose is favored at 155. Mike Santana is the underdog at 115. That means if you bet 155 on Moose, you'll win 100. If you bet 100 on Mike Santana, you'll win 115. I, I cannot imagine Mike Santana losing this match. He's never beat Moose. Moose has pinned him multiple times this year. Singles match, tag team matches. This feud has a little heat. The only the only feud that has a lot of heat, real heat, is I'll say real heat, but for modern day wrestling, real heat. Josh Alexander versus Steve Macklin. This is a pretty close second. If if Santana didn't beat their ass inside their locker room by himself a couple weeks ago, um, but other than that, they've been getting getting some good heat here, and the system loses on a regular basis. They're gonna have a clean sweep of losses, I think, um, at the pay per view because I think. Uh, JDC is going to be in the uh, call your shot. So Moose's favorite here. I I think the money's on Mike Santana, and I think they're going to get behind him and really push him going forward. So uh, I'm going with Mike Santana winning this thing. Joe Hendry versus Nick Nemeth for the TNA World Title. Um, Joe Hendry is a very heavy favorite here at 600 and Nick Nemeth at plus 300. So Nick, Joe, Joe Hendry at minus 600, Nick Nemeth at plus 350. So they, the Vegas thinks Nick, Joe Hendry is going to win. You got to bet 600 on Joe Hendry to win a hundred and bet a hundred on Nick Nemeth to win 350. Th- this is a tough one for me, folks, because there's going to be two overbooked matches on the show. Like I said, monsters ball and this, and I say that because you got Frankie Kazarian. John Layfield is going to factor into this. So you've already got four people involved in a one-on-one match. I I just I have a really hard time. We're going to say we just we're done with Bound for Glory tonight. We're talking about the show. I have a hard time picturing myself saying, yo, that Nick Nemeth versus Joe Hendry match was something else. That was incredible. That was five star. I I have a really hard time picturing that in my head be very very overbooked i've told you guys that i know for a fact tna does not feel joe hendry needs the title the fans want it of course they want it but the company doesn't they they know he's over they don't feel he needs the belt so um that being said i really would not be surprised if he doesn't win here i think it makes more sense for joe hendry to ultimately beat a heel for the title I mean, it makes uh, shit. Him being beating Nick Nemeth would be huge, though. You know, that's that's a big deal. Uh, but that being said, I don't know that Nick Nemeth wants to lose to someone from the TNA roster. I, like, I just can see a scenario, even though this is really predictable. I can see a scenario where Frankie Gazarian wins the call your shot, cashes in during the match, and it's a three way. I, I can see that being a re- very real thing. And in that case, either Frankie wins the title or Joe Hendry pins Frankie. And then Nick Nemeth is like gone and never loses. I mean, I, that's to me, that is a possibility. So um, I'm going to say Joe Hendry is going to win, though, because I don't think the booking in TNA right now is that advanced. I just think they're, they're going to make the predictable choice here. So I'm going to go... Joe Hendry. Tag team championship, the three-way Hardys versus the system versus ABC. The Hardys are so heavily favored to win this thing at minus 1,000. That means you have to bet $1,000 to win 100. Pointless. Completely pointless. Brian Myers and Eddie Edwards and then uh, Ace Austin and Chris Bay are both plus 700, meaning if you bet 100 on either of those teams, you'll win 700. The Hardys are winning. I don't, this is TNA. They're not going to not put the titles on the Hardys, even though they're openly campaigning to go to WWE. They're they they are going to win these championships. Don't don't get cute and, and thinking there's going to be some kind of swerve here. The Hardys are going to win. Beat that into your head. X Division Championship. This is the final one. Mike's ba- Mike Bailey versus El Hijo del Vikingo. This is a match for the sake of a match. They just want to entertain you. It'll probably be the first match of the main show. So for those of you who like this kind of thing, you're going to love this. 
there is a higher chance of me winning than Vikingo winning tonight. So they've got Mike Bailey at minus one, one minus uh, one thousand. Those are the same odds they have the Hardys of winning the title, meaning bet a thousand and win a hundred. Vikingo's at plus five fifty, meaning bet a hundred to win five fifty. He is not going to win. <laughs> I mean, just he's just not. He's flat out not. Everyone knows that. So I've got Mike Bailey, just like I have the Hardys winning. Um, the the heavily favorites in those matches, they're, they're they're going to win. So if I had to put a parlay together, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna place, I'm gonna say safe fifteen dollars. Okay, I would be um, taking Masha Slamovich. I would take Mike Santana. Those are both underdogs that I think are gonna win. And then I would take Jody Thread and Danny Luna as um as favorites. Um, if I put fifteen dollars on that, I would win a hundred and nine dollars and forty two cents. If you want to get a little riskier, give you one second here. Say instead of Jody Thread and Danny Luna, you go. Who is it? Who am I looking for? Give me one second here. If you want to get a little riskier and throw Josh Alexander beating Steve Macklin on there, which again, I don't, I, that's a really, really tough one. I, I really have no idea. So say you remove Spitfire, you put uh, Josh Alexander on there, bet $15. Um, that would be $313. So that'd be a, a more riskier one. But if I, if I were betting with my own money tonight, um, I would do Spitfire and Danny Luna in a parlay with, um, God, who's the other one I said? Masha Slamovich and then, um, Mike Santana. That's what I would do. That will do it for me, folks. Bound for glory tonight. We will see what happens with the show. Um, but I do I do expect a couple of very overbooked matches, including the main event. I would not cross my fingers for surprises because I don't even know who would be that big of a deal. But to me, again, Donovan Dijak and Trevor Lee are not. That's boring to me. Me personally, you guys might love the idea of that being a possibility. I would like to see a female come down. I, I, I like to see some kind of big time female show up. We'll see. I'm your boy, BQ. I'm out. Peace.